All right. Hello, uh, my name is Jason Biggs. I'm here to, I, uh, to talk to you about uh, chemistry and the Wolfram language. I'm a developer. Uh, I've uh, Previously, I was a chemist. I worked in uh, computational chemistry, went to, got my, my PhD and uh, did a few uh, postdocs. And I, when doing so, I did almost all of the work that I did in Mathematica. And uh, I really um, was able to accomplish quite a bit, like pulling in data from a, uh, generated from other other software and plotting it, doing calculate, doing calculations, simulations directly in Mathematica, and so it, it really felt like a natural step for me to uh, to kind of uh, join the company and try and improve the uh, the offerings that we have. And so that's uh, the little the uh, background. Um, Let's see. So yeah, I'd like to to go over just kind of a brief uh, overview of uh, the offerings that we have for chemistry and the Wolfram language, and then in future uh, in future streams here, we can we can discuss a uh, new uh, um, new functionality as it's being added. We can explore some in development uh, work, um, and I've got a little bit of that in this talk, but for the most part, I'm going to stick to uh, reviewing kind of what we have. Okay, um, so just as a brief like outline, uh, we'll go over like a history of, of everything that's been in the Wolfram language for chemistry uh, first. And then we'll kind of go over the, the different symbolic representations that we have for, uh, for representing chemicals. And I think that's, uh, that's a pretty uh, uh, interesting topic. Then we'll go over how you can do uh, visualization, um, plotting in 2D and 3D, a little bit of pattern matching. We'll talk about the uh, uh, the chemical conversions that, that we've added in in the, the most recent version in 13.1. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, uh, feature space plot and feature uh, feature extraction in molecules. and we'll we'll preview a, 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 a packlet that is about to be re released on the Wolfram packlet repository. Okay. Um, Right, so here is the, the history slide. Um, starting way back here in around uh, 19, uh, 1989 is when Mathematica 1.0 was released. And in version six is when we had chemical data, which uh, is gives an interface to a set uh, an amount of data that has been curated by people who, who work here. And so, uh, so starting in version six, you can ask uh, chemical data, water, uh, molar mass. You can ask for water's melting point, which we should all know from our uh, class, right? Water melting point. So we can ask that. We wait for it to initialize a second. And then, um, yeah, there we go. Zero degrees C. Eggs. I'm really glad that worked. Um, I knew it was going to work. So in version 10, uh, we introduced uh, the entity system in the Wolfram language, which was a uh, um, bringing together all these different uh, these different data domains which we have developed, and so chemicals uh, are the uh, the entity type, and that's the now the preferred way to to interact with the curated data that that is in the Wolfram knowledge base. Um, soon after that, we uh, invented a or we introduced a service connection to outside services like um, PubChem is a, is a very important one. It's a it's a repository a public repository of information holding. Info on like 97 million uh, chemicals, the last that I checked. And so uh, using using the, the built-in uh, functions here, you can you can contact their API and get as many inf uh, as much information as as they have available. So then starting in version 12, we introduced uh, the molecule as a data structure. And then uh, after that, we kind of uh, uh, jumped off. So I don't want to spend too much time talking about each one of these because we will get to those I don't want to spoil, right? Right. So a chemical representation. Um, what we mean here uh, uh, is it's it's a symbolic representation. So we've got a bio sequence here, right? And so in this case, it is just a peptide with a single amino acid. Obviously, you can do a. Uh, let's see, let's see. There we go. We can do, make a more interesting uh, biosequence, uh, right? And that uh, that has many many more peptides. It's got a longer sequence. But in this case, if we just have a, with a single letter, it represents uh, threonine. So you represent that as a biosequence, 
And you can con immediately convert that to a molecule, right? So if we evaluate this, and then evaluate this, these have different levels of information, right? So if we do input form slash add percent, percent, percent. Right, so we've got, um, yeah, so the molecule contains all the information. It's got all the, uh, the atoms that you have. It's got all the bonds. It's got stereo information telling you that you have a chiral center with a counterclockwise uh, atom arrangement. Whereas in the bio sequence, it really just records what uh, the sequence. And that really is enough. The information here is enough to go uh, to get this. We can also view it from the lens of the Wolfram knowledge base. So we can take that molecule and we can ask, what is your entity? And here I'll evaluate percent 13. And so it comes back, this is uh, in our knowledge base as L-threonine. And what, uh, uh, just a quick here, like what's the point of, well, no, no, I'll get to those down here. So the, the knowledge base uh, contains lots of uh, uh, information that, um, that isn't necessarily computable just based on the structure, right? They've got um, the hazard classes, the DOT numbers, drug interactions, partition coefficients. These are, again, more curated data, right? And then finally, we can, we can represent it just as a chemical formula, because sometimes when you're, uh, you're reading a paper or you're talking about a particular compound, you don't know what the bonding information is. You only know what the atoms are. You know uh, and they're, uh, how, how many of them are. So you can represent it as just a chemical formula, right? And so if you just have a chemical formula, you can still get uh, quite a bit of information from it. You can find the number of atoms, the mass. Um, let's see, the, you can get a formula, a string representation of it, the mass fractions. So all of these things at these different levels of, uh, of representation. And these are all what we refer to as symbolic representations of the, uh, the molecule object. And then finally, we have this, this function molecule match Q, which uh, um, can tell you, does this bio sequence match this formula? And in this case, it really does. Um, right, so we can go a little bit more into detail about uh, chemical entities, right? So these, uh, these again are, uh, uh, Q they involve calls to the Wolfram knowledge base where we can, where you, our uh, servers have this uh, curated information. You can ask about the, um, the acidity constants, the critical temperature, vapor pressure. And so these are all um, not things that we could compute from the molecule object directly. Whereas uh, with a molecule, you can compute quite a bit, but, uh, but, uh, Let's see, the main point here is that a molecule, there's no limit. There doesn't need to be an entry in a database in order for you to create a molecule. So here, obviously, I'm creating molecule from water. I'm giving it the string water, and it is parsing that locally on your machine, and it looks up and says, yes, water is uh, oxygen with two hydrogens, uh, and then it goes from there. Um, you can ask it for its atom list and its bond list, the molecular mass, the adjacency matrix. But you can also very easily create a molecule that never existed, was not in the knowledge base, right? So let's see. So this was an example where you can, uh, you can, this would be heavy water. I mean, that's going to be in the in the knowledge base. But you could, you could set the the mass number to some uh, ridiculous value, or you could uh, put in a smile string for some molecule that uh, is just fairly ridiculous, but. It's never been uh, been written out before, and so this would be some long carbon carbon and oxygen chain. I would not envy the synthetic chemist that needs to make that, but here in our lab, here in our lab, um, here in our notebook, we can just make it uh, easy as can be. We can just uh, just by typing all of these letters here in this uh, language that's referred to as smiles, which is a, a line notation, and allows you to. Um, by putting in these parentheses, I'm, I'm making a branch structure so I can evaluate that. And suddenly uh, it's the, I, I never really get tired of saying this, but the number of possible molecules that you could make is limitless. Um, I think it's probably count, countably infinite, but uh, you'd have to ask other people in the building here about that. Um, 
Interestingly enough, you can also feed molecule one of these big, long uh, systematic chemical names, and it will go through and it will parse it. It doesn't make any, it doesn't call PubChem, it doesn't call the Wolfram knowledge base. It sits there and reads this um, from, uh, from left to right, paying attention to the branching involved in the brackets, the stereo specifications, um, the different uh, fragments specified here, and can come back with this molecule. Um, if you wanted to, you could start with that uh, same um, name and create the molecule, create the, the bonds, and then generate 3D coordinates for it from scratch, right? Um, by from scratch, meaning th this doesn't represent anything that came from a, um, a crystallographic uh, database. Nobody did a, an ex a crystal structure on this. And I mean, to be honest, with a molecule like this, the crystal structure is only so relevant because it's, uh, as we like to call it, it's floppy. There's lots of rotatable bonds in this. So um, the uh, the energy difference between different conformations, different uh, um, angles in the, in the bonds is going to be lower usually than the amount of energy available in solution at room temperature. So in general, um, that's what we mean by floppy. These, these bonds are wiggling, vibrating. Um, but the, the 3D coordinates that we do generate are informed by real chemistry. They, um, the, uh, uh, let's see, the angles, the torsion angles, the, the bond lengths are all informed by, by chemistry and then refined using a, a force field to a, a quick uh, minimizing the energy. All that after you just hit uh, molecule plot 3D, it asks it for the coordinates and it generates them. Um, let's see. I already talked uh, about chemical formulas. Um, there, so right, I mean, what's interesting about chemical formulas is it allows, it allows us to, to represent um, uh, uh, chemical some chemical reactions that you might encounter in the classroom, which are just written out in terms of formulas. You have no structures. And so that's where chemical formula is useful. Um, so let's say you know that uh, uh, you want C6H5OH. You want this particular uh, uh, sugar here. And so uh, you can't create a molecule from that because you don't know uh, you don't know the arrangement of those uh, atoms, what's bonded to what. Um, but you can create a chemical formula from it, and from that you can get the mass, the charge. Um, you can even let's see, is that what the, where we're we going next? Okay, you can even right. You can try and find uh, isomers of it, right? So we'll take this guy and we'll say, find isomers of this. And then we want just the smile string. And then let's just see how much, what the, how many we get it back. And so what this does right now is it's calling up to PubChem, the, uh, what we, um, the database with 97 million uh, uh, entries. And they say they found they have 211 uh, molecules with, uh, um, with that particular formula. We can do a random choice, right, of find isomers. And then we can uh, molecule plot slash add, and then let's get five of them, right? Yeah, and so, uh, uh, so I always I think this one's fairly interesting. Um, what it doesn't do, like I said just now, it it makes a call out to uh, to PubChem and asks them, "What have you got with the formula C6H5OH?" What you might ask is, "Well, could you generate all of the isomers uh, with uh, that particular formula, all chemical, all possible chemical structures?" And that is something uh, that I am working on. Um, there are applications available which do this, and uh, um, I'm trying to uh, uh, write a packlet that will go in the Wolfram Packlet repository that will allow you to generate all of the isomers. Um, but that will be uh, available sometime in the next month or so. All right. So uh, now that we've got representations for biosequences, molecules, entities, um, formulas, we can start talking about a chemical reaction. Right, so we can uh, look at the one of these reactions you might find in a um, in a classroom, right? So you've got sulfuric acid and zinc hydroxide, um, 
acid pl acid plus base goes to salt plus water um you can uh, so this is a, this is your um symbolic representation of the reaction you can ask it for its reactants its products the counts they're in um you can get a, a displayed form of it um yeah you so uh this is uh interesting there's a there's lots of a uh, lots of room for expansion in this direction but the, uh this is where we're what we've done so far so now i've already shown you molecule plot but there's a there's a little bit more uh more that we can do so again we can create a molecule from an a, from a systematic chemical name the iupac the international union of pure and applied chemistry um you can create a molecule from an iupac name and then uh <clears throat> Give it a feed that into molecule and give it a, and ask it for the plot theme. You can show all of the atoms, all of the hydrogens explicitly, but that's not what we normally do. Normally, uh, let's see, I can go ahead and expand this. Normally, if uh, you look here and you see that the, there's a carbon, um, we, there's no C there because you know that if there's no letter, it's a carbon. And we know that this guy has a double bond and a single bond coming off of it. So you can infer the fact that there is also a hydrogen. So we just don't draw it because it makes the uh, the drawings um, far too busy and hard to read. You can uh, uh, give it a plot theme to emphasize the fact that part of the, the molecule is aromatic. Um, we can, as we said before, you can generate 3D coordinates for it rather easily and then uh, Unlike in 2D and 3D, we almost always want to show the hydrogens uh, because they're uh, um, <clears throat> a part of the structure, right? Um, but you can also, let's see, so we've got M up here. You can obviously also give the same plot theme of heavy atom to, uh, to uh, leave off the hydrogens. Ah, and you can also, um, Let's see, combine these, combine your plot themes, right. And then you can also uh, highlight particular atoms. You can ask it to, to highlight, um, uh, so in this case, uh, we're uh, highlighting a molecule M and I wanna highlight uh, atom nine. And I also wanna highlight a bond between atoms two and five. And then, uh, and then I want to highlight any oxygen atoms. And so the, there we go. Let's see. Ah, no, we can definitely not uh, protein fold. I mean, so let's see, you can get a, pro, a folded protein from, um, from the protein data bank, right? And you can uh, import the, the PDB file or the MMCIF. Um, folding proteins yourself we've been looking into that uh and it's not it's not trivial right it's not like uh uh the neuro the the machine learning where um like image generation where you can just uh type in um type in uh you know a, a a frog playing golf in the mountains and nowadays it can give you a, this uh this beautiful image of a frog playing golf in the mountains um whereas with this this protein folding so so essentially, you can give it a sequence, right? And it can give you 3D coordinates for it, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't store everything in these internal matrices and just predict it from the structure. It also has to have basically the entire protein data banks alongside it, like on your disk, because it's going to look at the, at the sequence that you gave it. And then it's gonna search the data bank for other similar sequences, trying to find uh, overlap. And then it's going to to find these motifs, and it's going to to figure out the 3D structure in your local copy of the data bank, and then try and apply those to the to the sequence that you gave it. So, um, yeah, we are looking into that, but it is not uh, uh, not trivial at all. Um, right. Uh, so recently, we uh, in, uh, improved the molecule plotting functions to uh, to to handle uh, atom labeling. So you can uh, say, um, you can label each atom by its index. You could, uh, let's see, you can specify the labels here. Those are a little small actually. So I might say, um, style this guy, font size goes to 
17, right? Yeah. So in that way, we can make we made the uh, the labels a little bit bigger. Um, you can specify uh, actually a property here, right? Um, so we get atom labels goes to let's say orbital hybridization. Ah, no, no, right. Molecule property. Right. And so there we see that uh, hydrogen atoms are not uh, hybridized. So we label those as just being S, whereas the oxygen is an SP3. We can also uh, do, so this is a common thing that you see in uh, diagrams and textbooks is to label the uh, the stereocenters by their uh, their chirality, S or R. Um, yeah. So let's see, here's a, an example, um, uh, taking a TNT and then labeling every carbon or nitrogen atom by its oxidation state. So you can see the, the syntax here is really nice. You give a pattern on the left-hand side and then a property on the right. And it labels, as you see this, uh, the nitrogens are all in the plus three oxidation state. Uh, some of the carbons, are, uh, whereas carbons range from uh, minus three up to plus one. Uh, you can do the same thing in, uh, in 3D, right? Um, yeah. So uh, we also um, have a lot of uh, a lot of functions for um, pattern matching, right? So we've got fine molecule substructure. Uh, molecule contains cube. And I mean, these are all kind of based around uh, um, molecule patterns, right? So here we can say, um, does this molecule, which is benzene, match the pattern? And here you need to speak a particular kind of language called smarts, which is um, what this uh, pattern is saying is you have an one aromatic uh, atom that's bonded to another aromatic atom, that's bonded to another, that's bonded to another, that's bonded to another, that's bonded back to the first one that we labeled with a one. If we wanted to, we could write that out in long form, right? So we could write uh, molecule pattern. So we could say um, atom blank, aromatic atom Q goes to true, right? And let's go ahead and call that uh, aromatic atom, AA. And so then in our um, uh, molecule pattern we're building here, AA, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we do a bond slash at, right, one, comma, comma, two, Two comma three. If I were slick, I would remember the the uh, language for partitions here, right? Four comma five, five comma six, and then sorry for this, uh, six comma one. Yeah, and so this this thing that we just typed out longhand is the exact same thing as this, basically. And they both display. Right, so slightly differently. So what this means is that these are bonded by an aromatic atom or aromatic bond, whereas here we've specified in any type of bond. So we could have, if we wanted to, yeah. And so essentially, uh, if you know this particular language, this uh, smarts, then, um, then you can write some really small and compact uh, patterns. But if you don't, we have a, a full form language that, uh, that, uh, that you can use. Um, let's see. Okay, so if AlphaFold exposed their API, then I think it'd be a really interesting um, project to make a, uh, a packlet that calls it and then, um, yeah. So uh, with that kind of thing, you would you would need to to make the call asking them to do the folding, and then you would receive some kind of task back, and you need to come back and check up on it. And I really think that that's the kind of thing that would be great for their new Packler repository. Um, 
Yeah. Um, so there's nothing too new here. Uh, you can look at um, these two particular sugars, which d differ really only in their uh, 3D uh, arrangement and the chirality of the, the atoms. Let's see. Ah, so this, this one I think is fairly neat, right? So we're going to find isomers of caffeine. Um, so we're going to uh, find isomers of caffeine. And, if, and when it comes back, we, we echo the number of isomers that it found, which is 2,500. And then we're going to select from those the ones that contain. So the second argument to select here is molecule contains Q. And then molecule contains Q has uh, one argument, which means it's, um, it's being used in the operator form, right? So molecule contains Q of a bond between an aromatic oxygen and an aromatic nitrogen. So what that so out of so what this command is doing is saying download all isomers of, of caffeine from PubChem again, and then uh, select only the ones with a with a, a bond between uh, uh, oxygen and nitrogen that is aromatic. And so uh, the the out of those original 2,500 250 match our pattern. Um, and now what we can do is we can take a random sample of those molecules. And that's why we have the, the seed here. We take a random sample of them and we find their, mo their maximum common substructure. And so that's actually interesting enough to look at. Right. Um, so this is the smarts for this particular molecule pattern, right? Uh, with this, again, uh, so this is any carbon atom, uh, ox, uh, aromatic or not, that is bonded via a single bond to something that is, uh, and that bond is definitely not an aromatic uh, ring bond, uh, and it's bonded to something that's either a carbon or a nitrogen that, uh, that has an aromatic bond to another carbon or nitrogen. Yeah, so this is a very uh, interesting smarts pattern. But this was uh, this was what was returned back by molecule maximum common substructure. So it took those, and I'm going to go ahead and evaluate this. That was okay. So um, PubChem doesn't always give back the same uh, same number of isomers. That's interesting. Okay. So now we we still have we have 240. So this might be a different selection. So we'll go ahead and uh, keep everything the way it was there. So, uh, so on the day that I made this slide, we got 2,500 back. Now we're getting 1,900 back. Uh, look into that. Um, but uh, right, so we found the maximum common substructure in them, and then we are plotting them in 3D, highlighting the maximum common substructure. And so here, this I think this is fairly interesting. And then finally, you can take those all and align them in 3D. And then, so uh, this uses the function molecule align, which is very uh, useful function for aligning things, but uh, visualizing it in the documentation examples, uh, you end up always, uh, the way to do it is to show the 3D plots all at the same time to prove that they're aligned. And you can see uh, at the space of the, uh, the five-membered ring, they are all aligned, but then uh, they're all kind of all over the place for the rest of the molecules. Okay, something new that we introduced, uh, let's see. Right, so uh, how can, so Dante says, how can PubChem API returns different values for the same call? They are an external service. And so, uh, um, yeah, I cannot really uh, vouch for them. Um, or I can't really, I, I don't really have full ex explanation there. Um, Okay, so uh, starting in uh, version 13.1, we introduced uh, a couple of functions uh, to facilitate uh, um, chemical conversions. So these are these are things that we uh, we pr have provided in Wolfram Alpha for a very long time. You can always you've um, been able to type into to Wolfram Alpha, convert uh, 2,300 milligrams of uh, sodium to millimoles. Well, now we have the ability to do that in the language. So we have a, another symbolic representation, the chemical instance of, uh, in this case, sodium 
and we say how much of it we have. And then that's, so that's our first argument. And then we ask it to convert to millimoles. Um, obviously we could have done the same thing and asked for um, kilo, kilo moles, right? Yep. Um, and uh, so we can do other things that uh, depend on the density. So in this case, we're doing a, a conversion from uh, 10 milliliters of water and we're asking how many molecules are in that. Um, we can, uh, obviously, we can do other uh, volume conversions. More interestingly, we can take a, um, we can uh, uh, find out how many moles of tricalcium diphosphate can be produced from five gra grams of calcium hydroxide uh, when it's reacted with excess phosphoric acid to produce calcium phosphate and water. So first, we start off with our chemical reaction, which if I, I'm going to evaluate this in place, right? So we have um, a chemical reaction with no, uh, no coefficients, right? So this just says calcium hydroxide plus phosphoric acid goes to calcium phosphate and water. So the first thing we do is we, we balance that reaction using the built-in function reaction balance, um, which again, a lot of these functions are, were built uh, with a mind towards uh, chemical education, because we uh, have a lot of people visiting Wolfram Alpha asking that, those kinds of questions. And so this is our, uh, uh, um, our effort to bring that into the, uh, the language proper, right? So, okay, so for, we start off, we balance that reaction and we see we've got, now got coefficients here in front of all the, uh, the, the species involved. And so then um, we can take the, the ratio of the tricalcium diphosphate and calcium hydroxide and we find that there's a one to three ratio and then we convert five grams calcium hydroxide to moles and then divide that by three. And so we find out that our answer that it takes um, uh, the number of, uh, of uh, moles of calcium hydroxide uh, that are needed. All right. Um, this one is uh, fairly interesting, right? So, uh, so we can do a feature space plot. Uh, this was introduced back in version 12.3 that um, uh, we, these new feature extract extractors that uh, can take in a molecule and it essentially return back a list of uh, ones and zeros. It converts them into a fingerprint, as you will. Right? And so we have these built-in uh, um, feature extractors, which are uh, based on things that are well known in the, the chem informatics community. Atom pair fingerprints have been used for decades, I believe, um, extended, as well as extended connectivity, um, topological features is what is commonly referred to as a daylight style fingerprint or an RD kit fingerprint. And we can use these to make a uh, feature space plots. And so here is where I want to uh, go off of this notebook briefly and show something that is almost ready to, uh, to submit to the Wolfram Packlet repository. And so it's being, um, uh, we're going through the final final bits of a uh, um, re internal review. So let's see. The following is a sneak peek. Will not work if Packlet not installed. Right. So I have this uh, this installed to a deployed to a to a resource um, object, and so I was able to install it on this machine. And so I just want to go through the documentation briefly. Um, so we uh, the package is called a uh, uh, molecule fingerprints, and for and it has functions for generating individual fingerprints. And so, for example, let's look here at the atom pair fingerprint. Right. So, uh, so the way an atom pair works, um, it's a substructure defined by two atoms and the uh, the number of bonds in between them. So, uh, uh, al along the shortest path in between them. So, in this case, um, we're looking at two different types of atom pairs. This is an oxygen um, with a. Uh, let's see. So this is an oxygen with a, a, a um, 
with with one with a valence of no not a valence of one a heavy atom coordination number of one meaning it has one uh, bond to a to another heavy atom and then uh, split between seven with a seven seven atom path in between and then we have uh, the same atom pairs but with four atoms in between and so essentially what you do is you look at a molecule and you generate all possible atom pairs for that molecule and for each pair of atoms you assign it to a bit um, and this bit can either be a large uh, integer so essentially you hash it and that gives you a large integer and for convenience sake usually the that is then modded to be between zero and some number 1024 2048 something that's convenient for storing these uh these objects as um as uh contiguous bits right and so when i ask i'm just going to scroll down here for the atom pair fingerprint of this particular molecule i get back a numeric array right and i can normal like that and it's a bunch of ones and zeros and so this is essentially what uh, a molecule fingerprint looks like Right, I could have uh, asked for it as a um, as a uh, what do we call it bit vector, and so this is a bit vector data structure, and so those are uh, very interesting. They're not as well integrated into the to the Wolfram language, so the default is to return back a numeric array, um, and then you can take that numeric array. Let's see, let's do this and let's make a molecule um, caffeine, right? And then I can take the, um, uh, uh, so what do we call Jack Hard, our dissimilarity of percent 47 and percent 46. And we get the N at that. Oh, capital N. Sorry, this is not my normal keyboard. Okay, so we these are these two molecules here, molecule caffeine, and this particular molecule are eighty six percent dissimilar, is what this says. And so, uh, so that's interesting. You can um, uh, do lots of uh, different uh, fingerprint dissimilarities between molecules in this package. There is a molecule distance function so that you don't have to first generate the fingerprint and then call uh, for the jack hard dissimilarity. It just comes out. Um, and here, this is actually what I came here for. Um, in this packlet, I put a, uh, um, let's see, smile strings for 300 antibiotic molecules as a, uh, as a resource, a packlet asset. And then I'm calling feature space plot using the atom pair fingerprint defined here in the, this packlet and then i'm telling it for every uh um every point in the features base plot uh label it with a tooltip of the molecule plot but generate it dynamically so that when i put my mouse over the 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 dot as it would as it as it is um the plot is generated right now, right? And so it's actually, it's fast enough that that is great. Because if you didn't do that, if you just said, without the labeling function here, it can take a while to, to generate the plots for all 300 ahead of time. So I think, I always think these are kind of interesting, right? So we've got these clusters of, of over here of uh, similar molecules. And you can, by mousing over, you can see what exactly uh, uh, feature space plot found to be so similar to in them, right? Um, Uh, I hope um, I hope that I do believe that tooltips come across in uh, uh, what do you call it um, the Zoom meeting, but you're going to have to uh, uh, verify that. Um, okay, so in this packlet, right there are uh, there's extended connectivity fingerprints, topological fingerprints, which are uh, otherwise known as RD Kit or daylight fingerprints. Right, they are, have their own hashing algorithm their own uh, uh, set of options. And so really the point of this is that built into the Wolfram language, we have feature space plot and feature extractor. And those provide um, just a turnkey like boom, it just works. But sometimes you want 
to fiddle with options. Sometimes you want to specify that you want to use a count vector instead of a bit vector, or that you want um, to include hydrogens in generating the fingerprints, whereas normally you do not. And so you can generate your own uh, fingerprinting function and feed that to feature extractor. And uh, so that's kind of the point of this, this packlet. And so it, it includes convenience functions like molecule nearest and molecule distance. Right. And so, like I said, uh, um, this is not released to the Packlet repository yet, but I think it's getting very close. Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, I wanted to include here, let's see. My note, the notebook will be distributed. Uh, um, but, uh, and I, let's see, my plan was to save it after I've typed in all this own stuff. Uh, uh, if, if preferred, I could upload the unsullied uh, version, but I kind of like to just type as I go, and I thought that stuff might be useful in there. Um, this is a this last slide is a page of uh, um, resources that that my coworker uh, Jason Sonnenberg has has put together, where uh, it lists a lot of the resources that that Wolfram Alpha and Wolfram uh, Language have uh, available. Right, um, we have a lot of calculators in uh, in Wolfram Alpha that you can interact with directly in, in your web browser. Um, we've got a lot of functions in the, the function repository. Um, we've got, uh, so this this last one, software design, that's that's an interesting link that, um, that uh, should be followed here. Uh, the, um, let's see, right. So uh, this was the kind of the start of uh, the Twitch uh, in, in our company, right? Doing the live CEOing. And so a very large percentage of the uh, the chemistry, the functionality I've just shown you was designed, uh, was pitched to uh, the head of the company, and we refined and hashed out the, the syntax uh, directly on on Twitch. So uh, if uh, if you're interested in that, that that would be uh, that could be you might find that interesting. OK, that's kind of a tautological statement there. So that's the last slide I have in this talk, but I also have um, I wanted to show, since this is a research and development, right? I could show something that is being uh, currently developed. So um, doo -doo -doo. yes, let's make this guy a little bigger. Let's zoom on up here. So what, uh, so let me, here. So this uh, this paper, was um, was circulated on the mailing list here at work uh, about synthesis synthesis of a Mo Mobius carbon nano belt, and so uh, so you you can imagine a nanotube, right? Um, but this is a belt, and it's got a twist in it, and so these guys actually were able to synthesize a Mobius uh, nano belt, and whenever one of these papers comes out, I look to see what kind of supporting information do you have? Um, some is it something that we can ingest? And if so, we could uh, uh, upload it to the Wolfram data repository. And that's what we have here. So in their um, uh, supporting information, they have uh, uh, um, coordinates, XYZ files, as well as energies and a few other things for, uh, for a lot of, uh, of entities. I guess, um, let me go ahead and evaluate this. And then, so I create, so what I did was I imported all of that, those um, uh, XYZ files and uh, the the data that went along with it and kind of tried to um, uh, put it into a form that it was ingestible as an entity store. And so then you, you need to come in and uh, register that, uh, those entity, that entity type. Right, and so we can do entity count, right? Or um, entity list of nano belt. And so what's going on here is that the there they have the final uh multi-walled or let's see Mobius carbon nano belt 2525. But then on the way there, they synthesize quite a few precursors and different uh, uh nano belts. And so all of the, the information for all of those things was included in the uh the the supplementary information. And so I went ahead and added it to this entity store. And so I think these are really neat, right? Um so this uh, is the final uh, 
Oh wait, that's a graphics row. I, I'm sorry. When I have a 3D plot, I always want to turn them around, right? How can you view something in 3D if it's uh, if it's just flat, right? Let's go ahead and make this bigger. So we have this. Uh, you can see the the twist right there. Uh, I haven't done so, but I was thinking it'd be kind of neat to um, take each six, six membered ring, make a hexagon from it, compute the normal vector, and then draw a line coming out of each uh, uh, ring. And then you could watch them uh, watch those normal vectors flip here at the at the kink. Right. And so, uh, so this is just a an ingested form of that data that's available to the users for whatever anybody, whatever a user would want to do. Here's the, the properties that they give the electronic energy, enthalpy of formation, Gibbs free energy, um, and the zero point energy. You can, uh, you can query for those for all of the, uh, the nano belts, right? And then uh, let's see, every data repository item needs a nice visualization. And so this one, this looks unexpectedly pretty, I think. Uh, doing a, a word cloud of the molecule plots uh, in there. And then you can uh, plot the uh, energy of the, of the nano belts versus the, the atom count. And see here, it uh, seems to be a steadily uh, decreasing function. You can look at, at the uh, smallest uh, nano belt that they, and it's been a little bit since I read it, so it's unclear whether they actually made this. I think this was a, a com just a computed structure. But anyway, uh, the plan is to put this on the uh, Wolfram data repository. I'll be submitting it. Um, I should submit it today. Uh, it takes a little while for it to be approved and then I'll also make a community post uh, about it. And now I'm going to turn to look at questions. Um, Yes, it would. I mean, uh, um, the correlations between uh, the chemistry that we're doing versus the Wolfram Physics Project, uh, I do also think that that will be really interesting. Um, and especially uh, um, directions that we might want to go include, I mean, uh, uh, chemical synthesis, right? Like uh, synthesis planning. And so that really speaks to um, to, uh, to Stephen Wolfram's uh, um, his uh, uh, his the mind, his mind, the way he wants everything to be. I mean, or not? He wants everything. It sees everything as as causal, as connected networks, and uh, the, these uh, these synthesis uh, networks and um, could be uh, is definitely something he has expressed an interest in. And so we're we're hoping to go in that direction also. Um, that is uh, all that I had uh, planned to talk about at the. Um, are there any uh, more questions? All right. Um, okay, well, uh, I want to say thank you to everybody for tuning in. And um, yeah, I would actually very, be very happy to do this uh, on a more uh, regular basis. Um, uh, yeah, um, shorter ones about uh, upcoming in development uh, work. And uh, yeah, so if uh, if anybody has any questions about this that uh, afterward, feel free to ask on uh, community or um, or the Stack Exchange or uh, or just send a send a line directly to the to the company. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat>